Hello and welcome. If you've been teaching in the year of 2020, you've probably done a little remote teaching. That's probably the understatement of the year. One of the things as a teacher I have found very helpful in a remote environment is something called extending your screen. Whoa. That was a bit of a stretch. Extending your screen is very useful. Even if you're teaching from home or if you're teaching in the classroom and have a remote student. I'm going to explain a little bit about the theory of it and then we're going to give a demo. Let's jump in. I'm going to give you a theoretical overview of the difference between extending your screen and mirroring your screen. If you're like me, when you've been teaching and projecting in the classroom, you're used to mirroring your screen. That is where your laptop screen looks exactly the same as your monitor, projector, or TV screen. That's what we're used to. But in remote learning, you may want it to be different. Whether you're at home and you have an external monitor, or in the classroom and you have a fully remote student, what if you could have one thing on your small screen and another thing on your big screen? In fact, it could be very useful. Well, that's called extending your screen. When you're extending your screen, you can have your Google Meet down below on your laptop, and your Google Slides, or whatever interactive thing you're using, Jamboard, could be anything, on your monitor, separating the two. Now, it's important to note when you're extending your screen, what it really is doing is making it act as one giant monitor. And when you set this up on the software side, which we'll demonstrate in a bit, you choose an orientation. In this case, I've chosen up down. So I've chosen that my laptop be below my monitor. You could also choose left, right or right, left. It's up to you. Now, since it's acting as one monitor, how do you get stuff from one screen to the next? Well, let's say I want to move my Google Meets from my laptop to the monitor. I drag it up and as it gets to the top of the laptop screen, it will pop up to the monitor. And vice versa, if I want to move it down, I drag it down and it will pop down to the laptop. Now, it's really important to realize when you're extending a screen, since it's one big monitor, you might ask and say, hey, where's my mouse? Well, your mouse, there's only one mouse and it can only be in one screen at a time. So if I want to move my mouse from my laptop to my monitor, I drag it up and it will pop up there. And if I want to drag it down, it will pop up down and I can work there and interact there. I'm going to pop my mouse back up to the monitor to demonstrate one thing. The bigger screen, what's really important is um, where you sort of drag down. I always go to the middle and drag my mouse down because if you go to the side and it's not lined up exactly, it won't pop down. So one tip that you can always do is move the mouse to the middle, drag it down, it'll pop down if this is your orientation. That's sort of a theory of how extending screen works. We're now gonna demonstrate what it looks like in real life. Right, so Colin just showed us how to set up a mirrored or an extended display if you have a fully remote student while you are on campus. We thought we would show you this now using some real technology. I happen to be at home today, so I'm going to show you on my home setup. Um, here I have my Chromebook, and I also have my other monitor. At school, this would be your projector or your board, whatever you have in your classroom. The most important first step is that you need to make sure you plug in your board to your Chromebook. So I'm gonna do that first. Once you plug in your board to your Chromebook, you will notice that you now have display settings on your Chromebook that were not there before. So that's why it's important to first plug in and then set up your display. Okay, so now that I have plugged in my external monitor, I can come down here and look at my settings. So I click on the bottom right, look for the cog, and you can type in display. Now, down here is where you'll see the option to mirror, as Colin mentioned. If you click mirror, your displays are identical on the external monitor 
and on the Chromebook. If I uncheck that, you'll see that this built-in display is my Chromebook and whatever else you have on your screen will be your projector. In this case, this is my external monitor. As Colin mentioned, you can either set this in an up-down orientation or a left-right orientation. Right now, mine is set so that the Chromebook is below the monitor. If I wanted to, I could drag this to the left and um, now they can go across between the two. I'm gonna leave it set up the way that Colin had it set to begin with. Now that it's set up the way that Colin had it set in his um, original example, you'll see that I have my Chromebook below, the external monitor is above. And so what I can do now is set up exactly like Colin mentioned. I have my Meet here on my Chromebook and I can click over here to Google Slides and click and drag with my mouse up off of my screen on my Chromebook onto the other monitor. So there are my Google Slides on the other monitor. I have down here my Meet where I can see my remote student, but the students in my class can see the slides up here. Now I can click and drag this back down onto the Chromebook if I would like. Again, that's for an extended screen. If you would like to have the screen mirrored, you can click back into your settings, type in display, and choose mirror. That means that students here would see the Google Slides, or the meat on the board. Hi, this is Colin from Makeshift Ag Tech. Thank you for watching our video. We're slowly building out our channel. Please like this video if you like it and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep on making the shift in Ed Tech.